All right, next let's do some review of recurrences. So recurrences are useful for solving counting problems. And we also have learned that we are able to find closed form solutions for certain types of recurrence relations. So let's give some examples of both of those ideas. So first, let's use them to count some things. Find a recurrence for the number of bit strings that do not contain three consecutive zeros. So if we're looking for a recurrence, so okay, let's let's <laughs> let's ground ourselves in this problem first. So a bit string, of course we just mean a string of ones and zeros. And the requirement is just that it does not contain three consecutive zeros. So something like one zero one zero one zero. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, etc. This is okay. But something like 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. This has three consecutive zeros. This is not okay. This is what we're disallowing. Okay. So with this in mind, we want to find a recurrence for the number of bit strings satisfying this property. And that means that we should think about how we can build up new bit strings with this property from old ones. Because a recurrence, basically, um, so bit strings of length n, a recurrence is a formula for the nth term in terms of previous terms in the sequence. So we want to basically figure out how to break down a bit string of this form into shorter bit strings of this same form. And the way that we can break this down is by considering how we can add on to the end to preserve this property. So think about how we can um, add to the end of a bit string like this to preserve this property. Another way of saying that is to think about um, what the endings of these bit strings can look like. So there's a few possible cases that we will end up having to consider. One of the following things must happen. It must either end in one, so we have some thing, and then one at the end, or it ends in a zero, and that we can split up into cases as well based on the digit that comes before it. Either it ends in one zero, and there's some string here, or if both these last two digits are zero, then this is where our condition comes in, that it does not contain three consecutive zeros. If the last two digits are a zero, this must be a one. And the idea is that now that we have a one after whatever string came before, there is no restriction on what this string can be, except that it can't contain three consecutive zeros. If we had a string and then we're gonna put a zero after it, this would be tricky to deal with because we would have to make sure that there weren't two consecutive zeros at the end here that would become three when we add this new one on. So basically that's the idea of splitting it up into these cases. Since we put a one 
after the previous string in each time. We never have to worry about that. And we just have to note that this is a string of length n minus 1. This case has length n minus 2, and this case has length n minus 3. And since every bit string of length n falls into one of these cases, that tells us that the number of bit strings of length n satisfying our condition, that's a sub n, is equal to a sub n minus 1, because that's the number of ways we can get a string like this, plus a n minus 2, that's the number of ways we can get a string like this, plus a n minus 3, that's the number of ways we can get a string like that. So here is our recurrence relation for the number of bit strings of length n that do not contain three consecutive zeros. And now let's take a look at how we can solve recurrence relations of this form to find a closed form solution. But let's not use this example because this example turns out to be quite a horrendous solution. So let's do a different one. Let me see. Let's write a sub n equals minus 5 and minus 1 minus 6 and minus 2. So how do we solve this? We form the characteristic equation R. So because this is a uh, degree 2, I forget if we call it degree or order, but it's you know order 2, degree 2 recurrence, because n minus 2 is the smallest term. So our characteristic equation is going to be a polynomial of degree 2. And it's going to be r squared plus 5r plus 6 equals 0. We get that basically by um, putting all these terms on one side and then replacing a sub i with r to the correct power. <clears throat> and um, we, you know, our solutions to this recurrence will, give, will be given to us by the roots of the characteristic equation. So let's find the roots. We can see that this should factor as, well, whatever method you prefer, the factor of quadratic polynomial. You will find that this factors as r plus 2 times r plus 3. So our roots are r1 equals negative 2, and r2 equals negative 3. And now, we basically can read off our general solution from the roots of the characteristic equation. Namely, they must be of the form a n equals some constant times um, characteristic root to the n plus another constant times other characteristic root to the n. So this is the general solution for our recurrence relation. And there's a number of ways that we can generalize this. For example, if we had repeated roots, so let's say we had another root that was negative 3, then instead of adding just another negative 3 term like that, we want to make it distinct from the other negative 3 term. And essentially, the way it comes out is that we have to add an n in there. So if you have repeated roots, you start getting terms like n times root to the n. And also, we saw how to deal with non-homogeneous equations. So for example, if we have something like this, the way we solve this non-homogeneous equation, or this non-homogeneous recurrence, is by, first of all, doing exactly the same thing to the homogeneous part. So we just forget the non-homogeneous part for a while and solve the homogeneous part. 
And then we find a particular solution to the non-homogeneous equation. And we do that by writing down sort of an equation of the form that we expect to happen, and then solving to find what coefficients it needs to have. So remember, the couple of cases that we know how to do are if it's an exponential like this, our guess for the particular solution is constant times the same exponential. Or if it was a polynomial, something like this, then our guess for the particular solution would be um, a polynomial of the same degree. And in order to find these constants, we plug into this recurrence relation, and then we can just solve for them. So that is how to find recurrence relations and to solve them.